general meeting to order. Please rise for a pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is an open meeting of the Seward, Nebraska governing body. The city of Seward abides by the Nebraska Open Meetings Act in conducting business. A copy of the Nebraska Open Meetings Act is displayed on the north wall of this meeting room facility as required. Disclosure of meeting recording processes is posted in the meeting room. A participant sign sheet is available for use by any citizen addressing the council. Presenters shall approach the podium, state their name and address with a clerk's record, and are asked to limit remarks to five minutes. All remarks shall be directed to the mayor, who shall determine by whom any appropriate response shall be made. The city of Seward reserves the right to adjust the order of items on this agenda if necessary and may elect to take action on any of the items listed. Please call the roll. Melissa Hendricks. Here. Matt Streisand. Here. John Singleton. Here. Carl Miller. Here. Jessica Kolchman. Here. Sid Campus. Here. Ellen Beck. Here. Jonathan Wilkin. Here. All right, first this evening we have the consent agenda. Move for a second. I have a quick question, oh. yeah. if you don't mind. On your claims, I think there was a $990,000 transfer to your streets fund. What would that entail? Um, um, we transfer every year in your budget funds from the, now is this an in or an out? An um, out. It's, it's just a on claim. the claim second sheet. And so every year we transfer funds from the general fund to the street fund because it sits in your budget as a specific one. Okay. And then that's what we use to fund all of our street projects through. And so there's a transfer in your budget every year that amount. That might have been Nick's transfer of that amount. Okay. So I can follow up on that. Um, it's but just a one-time transfer? It's a one-time transfer that we always... Year. In expedition of all the street money, it goes into the street fund and then out from that so we can show it to NDOT, Federal Highway, everybody that it went into the specific account and then it is expended from there. That's also the account that we would put all the explicit street funds into. So the funds that are like sales tax for motor vehicles, they go into a street fund specific. So. And then, then on page three, the Nebraska Pub, how something for utility? What was that one too? That's our payment. That's Nebraska Public Power, who we buy our electricity from. Oh, okay. Yep. So that's our payment for electricity. We had a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Mm -hmm. we, what's that? You made the motion. Second. Wait, you, uh, John Singleton made a motion, right? I made a second. And yeah, Matt made a second. Oh, no. Thank you. Too. That's for okay. drive. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, please register your votes. Please say the vote. Alright, next we have our administrative items. We have item number one, request for approval of the updated rules and regulations for the Civil Service Commission. Chief Peters is here this evening. Welcome. Good evening, everyone. Uh, the last revision of the Civil Service Rules and Regulations was done in 2014. So it was certainly uh, due for an update. Um, one of the biggest changes, and it wasn't necessarily a change, it was more of a bringing it up to uh, our current standard. Uh, a couple years ago when the city code was uh, revised and uh, um, with new um, uh, ordinance numbers and such, uh, that was never reflected uh, in the civil service rules. And there are several of them that are referred to. So uh, a lot of what I did was just going through and updating uh, with the current um, uh, ordinance numbers. Um, as far as content, not a whole lot changed. Um, just confirmed uh, uh, everything was still in line with state statute. Um, our section on, uh, on veterans, uh, prefer uh, Veterans credit the 10% the veterans get 
Uh, we, we revised that a little bit to, to bring it in line with what uh, the verbiage in the uh, statute was. Um, other than that, the other change, uh, significant or not, in the past we always had a rule uh, in, uh, um, that directed us to um, advertise an open position in the uh, local paper for three weeks. And um, we found that uh, uh, not a lot of our applicants were getting uh, uh, notice uh, by those means. So uh, we decided to revise the wording. A lot of it is, uh, I worked with Derek uh, with this to uh, uh, kind of reflect what the new wording in the uh, big, uh, city manual, uh, personnel manual will be. Uh, well, basically, Derek is the um, Secretary of the Civil Service uh, will kind of have uh, liberty as to how, how we're going to advertise. Uh, there may be instances where we will advertise for three weeks. There may be other situations where uh, we may only want to advertise for two weeks or maybe less, if at all. So that was really uh, uh, one of the other uh, substitute cha substantive changes. Other than that, um, so just, just moving things around so that they made a little bit more sense. Uh, but I'd be happy to answer any questions if anybody has. Any questions for Chief Peters? Uh, this one, I just I would go back and say that this was approved by the uh, Civil Service Commission at our last meeting. Okay. After they had a change. Nope. That was okay. the only thing I would add is that Civil Service assisted with the recommendations and approved it. Do you have questions or comments from the council or do you entertain a motion? Make a motion to approve. Second. Motion by Coulterman, second by Sid. Um, any further discussion? Seeing none, please register the votes. Please spread the votes. Voting in favor of Wilkin, Beck, Campris, Coulterman, Miller, Singleton, Strike, and Hendrick. All right, I have number Thanks. Thank you. Item number two, routine update uh, of the following job description. This one's the city administrator. Greg, do you want to Yeah, I'll take this one. Um, my job description hasn't been updated since 2007, and as part of the routine updates that Derek is doing, he's trying not to have job descriptions exceed five years before they're reviewed and updated, uh, just to make sure that we're covering uh, things that are kind of in the normal frame of what we do. Uh, you should have the updated version in there and then a red line version that you can kind of see. Uh, this was provided and reviewed in coordination with the mayor um, since it is a mayor's appointment and kind of one of the most direct uh, portions under there. I can answer any specific questions uh, in relation to it. I think one of the big ones was also noting some of the title changes for the department heads, just updating some of that. We eliminated uh, the requirement here at least temporarily for the ex officio members for a library, cemetery, and park. Most of the time now we're having department heads use their, their discretion, go to those meetings, be the liaison. And then if I'm, we'll say summonsed, which tends to happen, when I'm requested to come to one of these, then I make myself available and, and, and attend those meetings uh, as I'm requested. But um, I haven't came and we said, well, what's the specific benefit of me being ex officio? I probably get to actively be involved in the conversation, which if I show up, usually the boards and commissions are very nice in extending me an ability to speak and discuss with them. So we didn't see any specific reason to be there. Uh, we also have the council members that are liaisons to all these, so we have that direct connection to the council as well. So I can answer any specific questions. I don't think there was anything groundbreaking, but we'll get to that. Any questions or comments for Greg? If not, I entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Moved by Coulterman, second by Streisand. <coughs> Any further discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, please register your votes. Please display the votes. Voting in favor Wilkin, Beck, Campus, Coulterman, Miller, Singleton, Streisand, Hendricks. Right, item number three, this is update on the Wellness Center. Item 3A is consideration of an ordinance to impose an additional half cent, half, uh, one half of 1%. Uh, city sales and use tax on January 1st, 2023 as approved by uh, May 10th, 2022 primary election ballot. Greg? 
this is a formal step that we have to undertake to uh, complete this process. Uh, in the public discussion leading up to the election, we generally reference January 1st is when we thought the uh, sales tax would go into effect if it was approved by the voters. We did have the option with the timing to do it on October 1st. We didn't see any strategic value in that. We did review it with our bond council uh, beforehand. Um, and so the administrative recommendation is have it on January 1st so you can get plenty of notice to businesses. We'll post it in the paper and we'll let the Nebraska Department of Revenue know. And that gives us a full time to gear up and then have it take place on January 1st. So um, that's kind of what it is. And this is the last requirement that uh, the Department of Revenue needs. We have all the other certified documentation from the county clerk to certify the election results and send all that information on to them. Any questions or comments from the council? And this was reviewed by Kelly and uh, Mike Rogers, our bond council as well, this ordinance. Does someone like to introduce the ordinance? I'll introduce the ordinance. Introduced by Camper. An ordinance of the city of Seward, Nebraska, authorizing and imposing an additional <coughs> one half of one percent city sales and use tax as approved by a majority of the qualified electors of the city of Seward at the primary election held on May 10, 2022, to repeal conflicting ordinances and sections, to provide for publication of this ordinance in pamphlet form, and to provide a time when this ordinance shall take effect. The ordinance has been had, the ordinance has been read by title and is designated as ordinance number 2022-6, and the title is hereby approved. I need a motion to dispense with statutory rule. Second. Is there a second? Second. second. Moved by Colterman, second by Miller. We have a motion and a second. It is there any discussion? Seeing none, please register your votes. Please display the votes. Voting in favor, Wilkin, Beck, Camprith, Colterman, Miller, Singleton, Streisand. Voting against, Hendrick. Again, this is ordinance number 2022-6. Would anyone like to move that this ordinance be passed and adopted as read? So moved. Second. Jack, can you repeat that again? I move to approve. Is it second? Is second. Okay. Moved by Beck, second by Wilkin. A motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, the question is, shall ordinance number 2022-6 be finally passed and adopted? Please register your votes. Please display the votes. Voting in favor, Wilkin, Beck, Cambridge, Coltman, Miller, Wilkin, Streisand. Voting against, Hendricks. And this is our only ordinance for this evening, so I'll need one final motion to make this ordinance a part of the permanent record. So moved. Second. Moved by Coltman, second by Miller. A motion and a second. Please register your votes. Please display the votes. Voting in favor, Wilkin, Beck, Campus, Coltman, Miller, Singleton, Streisand. Voting against, Hendricks. Okay, item number four. Is this Mayor, yes. if I can, since we did this as an update on the Wellness Center, I'll just give you a quick oh, sure. brief update on what's transpired since our last meeting. Um, we did turn in all the documentation for the Shelver Ready grant where they came back to all applicants and asked for a few more pieces of information. Uh, the last piece on some tax status for us for <coughs> sewer changing the game, which is the nonprofit element of that that applied, uh, was all sent in today after we got a response on, on the tax status that was positive, and we turned all that documentation in to DED today. So there's nothing else that we need to provide them. Uh, so the outlook on that, I hope, is pretty good. There's nothing else that we can do at this point, is sit and wait until they make final award on that one. Uh, we have not heard from DED in regards to the other uh, capital fund. Um, grant that's up to a $10 million grant, so we'll continue to monitor that and see when they have staff available on the administrative side that they put the application out or prep it, so we'll work on that. In the meantime, uh, I met with the planning committee this week, and they have hired, through their funds, a grant writer to apply for the litany of grants we've identified. I think there's 8 to 12 now that we've identified that have substantial funds that we can go after, so we're talking anywhere from a hundred thousand to a million plus and so they're going to work with a grant writer and have them work on behalf of both the city and the city ones will come through the council so you'll have to approve applying for those 
but on behalf of the nonprofit to apply as well uh, for ones that they would qualify that we may not specifically so that funds can continue to do that and then we'll work our way through but a lot of those are due this summer so uh, Peter Q will be the one from us and that one is the initial one is due July 1st it's just a two-page thing that we have to turn in and then we'll have the full Hewitt Foundation grant coming up. I believe we're going to apply for a million on that one. So that's what's going on on that end. Other than that, you'll see elements in your budget, but as we talked about before, we're not moving forward on anything else that expends specific funds until we've secured enough grant funds that we feel the project has got all three of the stool legs. So hopefully that'll be soon. Any questions or comments for Greg? Next item, number four, consideration of a resolution establishing a policy for application to construct utilities and city right-of-way and affix the amount of fees charged. Greg, do you want to give us some background on this? And yep. we also have a representative from ALO that would be able to kind of give us a preview of what their plans are in, in the project timeline. Um, this one, back in 2013, um, under previous administrator, this one was brought forth and we had set these fees uh, and elements related there too. We went back through the minutes because again, it predates me and the majority of my staff now. And so we were kind of looking for the specifics. And I think the, the general purpose was is the city wants to understand what's going on the right of way because it's becoming more and more heavily frequented. And so we went back with the discussion on that and working with some of our partners, including but not limited to Allo and, and a number of other ones and looking at the fees associated with this and trying to charge a fee that covers the cost of the city but does not penalize those that are trying to work within the right of way. Especially again, large projects yes. they are more expensive. It tends to be the smaller ones when you're replacing your sewer line that's gone bad. The fees on that are not exorbitant in regards to permitting. We just want to know who's digging in the right of way when your neighbor comes out and starts yelling at us. We, we have a permit on file. We know what's taking place. And then we can also do a check other than the 811 to make sure that we're not interfering with something that's put in. And so we were asked to relook at this, and so I tasked the staff uh, with looking at what our real associated costs were for looking at small scale to large scale permitting and everything that's involved in it. And we felt that the adjustment on the numbers uh, that we have proposed here, we will recommend one, resol one amendment tonight, and that's in the first fee associated with uh, section A where it lists a 25 or 50 or $100 fee associated with differing, varying amounts. Um, our recommendation is to amend that to just a flat fee of $25. Um, and that will cover the general review. And then the, the linear fee and the other for trenching, boring, and overhead and replacement of existing lines, that will cover our actual cost in review when we get in this extensive process. So. Um, we talked to Tim and, and I talked with the mayor today and we felt that that was uh, more in line with what we see in other places and isn't as much of a penalty to those applicants that are coming in or looking around. We couldn't find any specific laid out policy reasons on this other than we, again, we just want to have that understanding and knowledge and review of what's taking place in our right of way, be able to make contacts and critiques on that process through the permitting process and then also be able to have that permit so we can follow up on who's who's there when the neighbor comes out and starts yelling at us. And we're like, oh, we know who's there. We have a permit that shows who's who's down in that right of way. So uh, so you need an amendment? For this, we would recommend an amendment to amend the first portion of sub A. Uh, to, a to a flat fee of flat fee $25. $25. For and then, $25. Yep. Go with that. Any questions or comments initially? Otherwise, we would welcome our guests from Allo. Would you like to come forward and address the council? Welcome. Thank you, Mayor Eichmeyer, City Administrator Butcher, and, and the Seward City Council. I'm Andrew Denton. I'm Allo's in house legal counsel and I also handle our government relations work here in Nebraska. Uh, really want to thank everyone here, including Mayor, City Administrator, and all the City Council members. I think I've uh, spoken to all of you except one individually uh, and, and um, thanks for for considering this resolution uh, this will bring Allo's cost of building Seward and any company that wants to come in and invest a lot of infrastructure into the right-of-way down significantly um, 
those savings uh, by and large will, will be passed on to the city of Seward with additional investment. Uh, just some background on Aloe's project in Seward. Uh, we'll deploy about 90 to 100,000 feet of fiber optic in the Seward right of way. Um, under the current fee uh, structure, if assuming we reach that 100,000 foot level, uh, that will cost Allo $125,000 in the per linear foot fee alone, uh, in addition to the per permit review fee, which will be about another $6,000 based on our expected number of five permits. Uh, this puts Seward well above really any other city we work with at this point. Um, Allo generally budgets $1 per number of population for a town, uh, 12 cents per linear foot, and a $25 flat fee will put us a little bit over that number, but um, considering the, the great effort uh, the city staff and the city council has made, uh, I think we're more than happy to deal with that. Um, and an update on the Allo project, um, if this resolution is adopted and, and the ordinance is, is put into place, and uh, assuming our permit's clear, which we believe they will, our groundbreaking date will be July 17th. We'll build as quickly as we can, uh, taking into account all the safety measures that we always adhere to. Um, you'll see a lot of Allo trucks driving around. You'll see a lot of Allo personnel out and about at gas stations, restaurants, uh, potentially in your yard at some point. Uh, but we hope to go live with our first customers uh, by year's end and we hope to be fully completed with the Seward project, which will connect every home, every business, and every government entity with fiber optic connectivity, which will provide um, really the fastest commercially available internet. I'll also provide landline phone and, broad and uh, cable TV service. We hope to be finished with that by um, summer 2023. Uh, and, and the quicker these fees can be uh, brought to a more equitable level, the, the quicker Allo will get started. So. Uh, in closing, we, we appreciate um, the effort city staff and, and the city council has made, and I'll be happy to try to answer any questions. Okay. Any questions for Andrew? Yes. The reason for five permits is due to, like, the... The phasing? That, that's our network yeah. layout. So uh, when we build out a city, Allo uh, uses fiber loops, are called ponds, passive, passive optical networks, and those loops are the... the the arteries um, and then the, the connections, individual connections to side streets and houses are the capillaries. We will uh, submit one permit per pond. Uh, Seward right now, we are planning to be able to connect the whole town using five ponds. So five ponds will be five permits. And we're uh, very happy with the $25 flat review fee on each permit. We think that's appropriate. Matt, did you have something? No, I sure don't. Again, from the administrative standpoint, we. We didn't do this specifically because of Allo. We did it because it was brought to our attention to review our policy and really understand what is the purpose of this fee. And it's probably to cover our time and effort to make sure that we're being diligent in our use of the right of way and our review of it and the staff time it takes for that. Um, and you know, $120,000 fee, that would pay for the entire staff in there for two years. And this review will take you know, maybe a few days. To, to get all the way through it and then get some questions into it. It's just not proportional to what it ultimately ends up to uh, in regards to the fee on it. And we so. also want to be competitive with other communities and make sure that our fees are in line with what other communities are charging so that, um, the one, we don't get off on the wrong foot with somebody wanting to invest millions of dollars when they stick with their sticker shock of looking at our fees so they might be compared to other communities that are around us, as well as, as other other states. So this seemed like a good time to take a, a hard look at our fees, and uh, especially with the project. And I think one reason we don't see a lot of question uh, questioning about our fees is because we just haven't had larger projects like this. Most of the projects are smaller, and so our fees are much more, um, relatively speaking, um, appropriate for the size and so given the, the size and scope of this project it definitely uh, you know math is undefeated and when you start adding up um, what they were looking at it didn't it did make sense for us to review this so that's why we brought this to your attention and um, as a resolution so that hopefully we can um, continue moving forward with this project so, any other questions or comments from the council these fees here then are comparable to like your the not even that. Some of them, 
Some of them don't do any at all. Yeah. Some people don't even have fees. Or a right of way permit. Right. It's a bit of a free for all. Yeah. So we felt like it was important to have something in place, um, but making sure that it made sense given the scope of this particular project, as well as any future projects that may come along. So is there a way to eliminate the fee of a linear foot since they're already getting the permit to be out there? It can be. You guys can set the fees at whatever you want. Our recommendation is just reduce it to cover the administrative costs rather than making it. What are our administrative costs? Just the employee that we just hired to do the no, no. locating? <coughs> That's some of it, but we're handling all the locates with that. So if we were going to cover the person just for the locates, then you, you might want to leave it as is. But um, in regards to just the review, for somebody that comes in that's replacing a sewer line, we're trying to get it more in line to the time it takes Sarah and Tim to review that. Or everybody, because these permits are actually reviewed by street, water, wastewater, electric, myself, planning and zoning. They're all, all of us have to review it and sign off on them. So there's a little bit of an element involved in the whole city. So, But we feel this is far more in line with what, what the associated costs are. The linear fee really does extend. The $25 would not cover a permit like this. The permit and the files that they turn over to us is a book, basically, of sheets that we have to go through and look how it traverses through every lot and what it interacts with. And so the linear fee, fee adds, covers kind of the time that it takes for Tim to go through all that and then follow up with the utilities. And that's how you can make sure it's proportional to the size and scope of the project. Because um, the more linear feet they are, there are, then, then the higher that particular fee would be. So if you have a relatively small project, then it would be appropriate. So it's hard to try to have one size fits all. And so with this, we, we have Part of it is a flat, a flat $25 fee, uh, which it would be a one-size-fits-all, and then you have the adjustable, uh, the rate that's uh, contingent on the size of the project and, the, and how many linear feet you're talking about. So, any other questions or comments? Well, like, Introduce a resolution? Uh, I was going to try to amend it first. Oh, yeah, it, it, I don't know that it matters. <laughs> can, Kelly, does it matter which if we introduce like and then amend it? it? You can move for approval with the text amendment. We don't need to amend it first. Okay, that's what we weren't sure about. Okay. So did you want to introduce it with the amended yes. language? <laughs> and that amended language would, Greg, do what? It would set the base fee for the permit at $25 as the base fee, similarly, and then the two linear fee. One is for trench and boring overhead lines and then replacement of existing. So that's the resolution that's been introduced. Resolution has been introduced and is designated as resolution number 2022-21 as amended. Would anyone like to move that this resolution be passed and adopted? So moved. Second. Moved by Coulterman, second by Wilkin. We have a motion and a second. We have a discussion. Seeing none, please register your votes. Please display the votes. Voting in favor, Wilkin, Beck, Hampers, Coulterman, Miller, Singleton, Streisand, Hendricks. Thank you. Did you want to add anything else? No. Well, I just would echo um, so Nate Berman, CFO of Allo Communications. Just would echo Andrew's appreciation of your consideration here, as well as just communicate how excited we are to be in the in the community as a partner. Um, if you haven't heard about us, uh, you will. Um, you know, one of our values is to be local, and hopefully, you'll find that by lo us hiring local. Um, you know, we'll have a storefront right here downtown. Um, and so we're excited to be a part of the community. Uh, we will be in yards. We will be, you know, everywhere. We'll, we'll stub our toe. Please let us know where we stub our toe, and we'll do our best to make it right. But we're looking forward to being a long-term um, partner of yours to um, enable growth and to make uh, sewer, uh, to continue to, to make sewer a great place to live, work, and play. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah. And welcome thank to sewer. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, guys. All right, next we have the award uh, community development block grant CDBG downtown revitalization program. Uh, these are forgivable loans. Greg, yeah, we have four projects. That, um, Kelly, did we approve these as a block last time? I think, and so we can. I can answer any specific questions. These have been approved. 
at both the DTR committee level and then also completed their tier two review, which includes the SHPO review and the environmental review. And so these are all ready to go. I would ask that the motion when it is made be subject to available funding just because some of these are going to start getting to the point where they're like the last one on the list where we may have $38,000 available into a $40,000 project. I think based on what I'm hearing from Kelly, we may be able to fund everybody with all the DTR funds because some of the adjustments we made on other larger projects. But just in case so that it doesn't have to come back to council, would the motion to approve these be subject to available funding? just so that we don't have to cycle them back. And then, because it's a first come first serve, they're all in order. I think the four that are listed here will all be funded. But from now on, just so we cover everybody, that's the motion I would recommend. And you'll be recusing yourself from yes, C. Please. So for that reason, I'm gonna use individually. That way you can vote on the mm. other three. Nope, I she can't vote on any of them. Oh, any of these? Nope, yeah. okay, mm -hmm. so she'll abstain from the whole vote. So this would be projects that are not funded could go back to LDA. They could, like I said, from right now, the way Kelly's quantifying some of those other ones we talked about and how those are shrinking, we may not have to go back to LB840 for other potential options. This DTR may fund everything, which would be perfect, but as we know with the last one, we thought we had way over funding, then we had to open the whole application back up because stuff didn't go the way we thought it would. So just trying to be very efficient and get these rolling. Kelly, did you want to do these as a group, or should we do each one individually, or leave it to council if they want to pull anyone out? I think, like last time, we just did it all as a group. So yeah, if you want to pull one out, you can. But okay. Strong enough to. Okay. I didn't know if anyone wanted to pull these out of the way. We'll do them as a group. I would move to approve all of them subject to available funds. Yeah. Second. Motion by Beck, <laughs> second by Coulterman. Is there any further discussion? <laughs> Seeing none. Congrats to your vote. Please play the vote. Voting in favor, Wilkin, Beck, Campris, Coulterman, Miller, Singleton, Streisand. All right. Uh, next we have a citizen's request. This is a request to amend 382-11.1, uh, sort of golf cart usage in town. We, uh, this was a citizen request by Jackie, no Jackie Knoxon. Greg, do you want to say anything? Jackie's here, and so we can have her talk specifically about a request. It was came through the online portal. Uh, generally, I think it's to take another look at our golf cart ordinance, and I'll let Jackie speak to that. Thank you. My name is Jackie Knoxon, and my mailing address is 1265 North 6, which is on Highway 15. Um, I want to adopt a change to the golf cart um, uh, amendment. It was, I think it was in effect when they had a uh, private golf course, which is no longer a private golf course, I understand. Um, I've been driving my golf cart for probably three or four years around the city of Seward with no, no big thing. My insurance company said they would cover it. However, at that time, I did not have insurance on it. So I went to my insurance guy, and he also is a member, or was a member of the golf course. He said he would cover me, and I wanted to be fair, so I went and got full coverage on my uh, golf cart. It is an amendment to my motorcycle insurance. Um, it, however, at that time, did not have turn signals, lights, horn, all that kind of stuff. I have all that. I just put $1,500 into that to make it technically street legal. However, it can only go 16 to 18 miles an hour, and I can understand not being on Highway 15 and high, Highway 34. But what I have been seeing are side-by-sides and four-wheelers driving around the city of Stewart are going east on 34, south on 15 without even slow-moving signs. And the older ones, I would bet if you had stopped them, they would not have insurance. The newer side-by-sides and four-wheelers, if they have a loan on it, they have to have full coverage insurance. But I'm street legal. I can understand not being on 15 and 34. However, 1265 North 6 is my mailing address. That's on 15. We're building a shouse in Garland. We are living in our RV at the old wayside area across the Shells, and that's also on 15. I took the golf cart and moved it to Garland for right now, but my insurance company said they would cover me on the street even when I didn't have insurance on it. I have full coverage insurance on it now. I have emergency flashers, headlights, turn signals, horn, everything. So I can understand staying off of 15 and 34, but other than that, 
And that's state law. There wouldn't that's be anything exactly. we can do with the highways. They're not allowed on highways anyway. So mm -hmm. if you're thinking about changing that, you're in the wrong room. Yeah. <laughs> How about the back streets? It's up to the council. What is our ordinance right could, yeah, could you Currently, the way I think it was included in your packet. Yeah. Currently, I believe as it's drafted, the last time we amended this just recently, is we left it to being only to and from the golf course, and you're technically supposed to have a permit that's free that you'd get from Cody at the golf course. Other than that, and then we wavered 4th of July because that is a nightmare, and if we had the police out trying to deal with that, they wouldn't get anything done. But so. honestly, in our neighborhood, you see, the, you see golf carts and the, you know, other vehicles like that are all over the streets driving around all the time. So I don't know what's being enforced and what's not. But. Again, a lot of this is going to be complaint driven. Um, I mean, our, I don't want to speak for the chief, but there are other priorities in the community. Um, and I think at the time when we discussed this, and it was, it's been a number of years now, we, we talked about not just golf carts, but other uh, um, other UTV type vehicles. And I know there was concern by at least a couple residents in particular that didn't want to have restrictions placed on, on those types of vehicles. Um, golf courts, golf carts are you know defined differently in state law. And so that was a different category. And I think technically you can only Cross the highway 15 at North Street, I believe, is what was decided back then, um, because you had to somehow get to the golf course from the east side of Highway 15. So that was that was what the council left. It. Um, obviously, with gas prices going going up, I think more and more people are utilizing um, other means of getting around town, whether it be you know UTVs or golf carts or other vehicles. So um, that's. Again, this was a council. This was a citizen request, and so we don't have the administrator does not have a recommendation. We just wanted to hear from the citizen and give the council an opportunity to discuss it. And if you want to provide us with direction, we can always you know, have have something drafted for a future meeting if that's what you want us to do. Yeah, John, we get into from years back when we got into the all-terrain vehicles and the UTVs. Is we are an ag community, and, and we give the rights for them to do have say four wheelers and that come through the town because we have a lot of farms and that's one thing that you know we should never take their rights away because and then with gas prices too they're coming a lot of farmers live in town and they go out to the farm and they'll bring in their AT, well, ATV or UTV and that's what we brought up years ago and that's why we allowed those in town. I think the last time we had this discussion it was also high high gas prices at mm -hmm. that time and that was sort of the the impetus for it because people started seeing more of them around town and there you know there is a concern about safety and there's a concern about the age of the people on some of these uh, you know UTVs, ATVs and golf carts. Um, some some aren't as responsible as you as far as what how the golf carts dress with lights and and other kinds of, of warnings or flags but that's again that's an enforcement issue on our end to make sure that that's being enforced but um, it is it's difficult to have a one size fits all policy when it comes to I don't to golf. Sure. And my insurance guy, they golf up there. And he said he don't have a problem with it. He would insure me on the street. So and I do have full coverage now. Right, but then But the rule was for when you guys had a private golf course. You don't right. have a private golf course. But we still have a golf course. But it's not private. What does that matter? I was under the impression that the amendment was for private. No. It was for anyone golfing. It had nothing to do with it. I said you, you were involved in that. Yeah, it had nothing to do with the fact that it was private at the time. Okay. Yeah, I think it just had to do with trying to figure out how to get golf golfers with their golf carts that were right. storing them at their houses to the golf course. Right. Cause yeah, we wanted to just eliminate it or isolate it to North Avenue so that there weren't people crossing 6th Street all up and down the highway. And that's a safer crossing up there. And the next question, Brian, how many complaints do we really have? Cops wave at me. I, I asked Brian. Mm -hmm. I, I can't think of one. Do you have any safety concerns of it at all? My only concern since I live up near the golf course is <clears throat> with 
the ATVs and the side-by-sides, it seems to be more the 16-year-old and up people driving those. But with the golf carts, uh, it's not. <clears throat> Oftentimes, it, even though I think it's supposed to be, it appears like there's more like kids will jump on those and zip around, which I think is a safety concern because I've watched them. They don't they don't watch where they're turning. They don't. Well, and, the and most of them don't have lights on them like an ATV does. Brake lights, turn signals, headlights, things like that. So um, I'm in favor of keeping it the way it is, just because I think the golf carts, in general, being on the the streets, are less safe than a side by side or an ATV. And I think if people want a more economical way to motor around town, they should just buy one of those. That's my two cents. Well, and we did change some of the policies regarding golf carts at the golf course regard as far as you know the cost of, of leasing or, or renting one for the day or versus you know storing them I think a lot of the golfers with the exception of like Augusta where you have a lot of golfers who specifically wanted to live by the golf course I think some you know some of those golfers are going to have their own golf carts at their houses but I think we've seen uh, an increase in the number of people just renting right. versus paying the trail fees for their own. So I just, I really don't know how many golf carts are even out there right now, uh, as far as golfers are concerned. But so that's just been our, our observation. What, what do you need from us tonight? We just wanted a discussion. We wanted uh, her to have an opportunity to present to the council her concerns or her recommendation for changing the ordinance. And then we would wait to see if the council wanted us one of the administration to draft something, um, you know, basically direct the city staff to draft a res or would be an ordinance for this, um, and, and, and give us some guidance on what that ordinance would look like, so that uh, we aren't wasting your time with bringing something back that wasn't what you intended. But if otherwise, you don't you don't have to do anything either. I mean, it's up to the council, council as far as moving forward or not. Yeah, I, I recommend no change. And after talking to Brian, and there's not been complaints. Why are we going to make a change? So I guess, just so we're clear, um, I'll just give you an opportunity if anyone wants to make a motion to direct city staff, do so now. If not, we'll move on. Kelly, is that fair? Okay. When we're talking about complaints, what are you talking about? That people Ill um, illegally driving them around? Any, any type of complaint. Either they're going too fast or they're getting out of the ordinance requirements. So if, they're, if we're not getting, if we haven't had any complaints or there are not many citations or no complaints why are you making any recommendations to change it? I believe the request was to allow everybody to use, to a, golf use a golf cart. Is <coughs> that where we're going with this? Is to That's what she like, would like us to do. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't necessarily complaints on the current use because the current use dictates or stands for to and from the golf course. Okay. Her recommendation was to all purpose like yeah. to basically expand that to any yeah. street off of major highways and transportation around town. And considering this is a request from a, from a citizen, maybe we should at least make a motion and vote on whether or not we have it on the record that we considered and we made a motion one way and went one way or the other. And I was looking at it wrong, and I would make the motion that we go ahead and allow motorized golf carts to, I guess, travel any street. We, we just have to uh, allow, tell them to yeah, bring us the They would have to bring us the yeah, resolution. Yeah. So yeah. the motion would be to direct city staff to pro to um, produce a draft ordinance to present to the council. Um, that would be what we would be asking. So uh, Basically rescinding part B where it says yeah. the operation is only to and from the golf course. N-E. N-E. Yeah, is that right? If that's your motion, I'll second it. Yeah, that's my motion. Okay. Okay. So just re to restate that, so there's no confusion. Um, Councilor Singleton's motion is is to have direct city staff to draft a an ordinance uh, that would uh, allow for the use of golf carts uh, other than just to and from the golf course. Correct. Okay. And it was seconded by Council Member. If if, if that's sufficient guidance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now. With that, can we add an age stipulation? 
Well, it's a it's simulation simulation now. Do we need to make a change on that? Already in there? Unless you wanted to. It's already part yeah. of well, it. Well, if you wanted to change the agent. No, no. Well, you have an operator's license. Yeah. You have to be 16 Correct. Or 16 or older. And yeah. you have to have insurance. We can all consider that once we see the rest of the work. Yep, I'm good. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. All right, is there any further discussion? Seeing none, be register your votes. Please display the votes. Voting in favor, Wilkin, Beck, Miller, Singleton, Streisand, Hendricks. Voting against, Camprit, Coulterman. So we'll bring that to the council at a future meeting. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next, we have the city administrator's report. Uh, city administrator's report is included in your packet. I don't know that I have anything specific to add to. We already covered the wellness center. Um, budget will be coming up in July, so we'll look to schedule a specific budget meeting with you probably towards the end of July after the mayor makes his recommendation on the budget and it's seen by personnel finance and audit committee. And so we'll kind of coordinate some of those things and then proceed through that process. Um, other than that, uh, just a reminder, we noted the issue with, if you saw on social media today, we we're kind of in that season of tall grass and weeds and things like that. Just a reminder to everybody out there, we're complaint-driven basis. And so somebody needs to call in and say, hey, my the weeds at this property I'm concerned about, can you guys go take a look at it? It's four inches. Because um, I talked to somebody the other day, <laughs> and they're like, uh, on a whole different issue uh, in regards to permitting something. And they said, yeah, my neighbor across the street, it, or that's it's a vacant house or something, the, the weeds are up to two feet on that. I'm like, did you call it in? Well, no. And I'm like, so if it's becoming an issue with the, with the lot, please, and it's bothering you, please call it in so that we can follow up on them. Again, we're complaint-driven basis, so we're not just cruising around out there looking for weed abatement. So. And that would be calling Tim, right? Yeah, call. Not you. Yeah, call. Well, yeah, there's a number to get to here. Right, I'm just saying not. I'll pass it on if I get it. the other thing is, is by doing that when it hits the problem is is when it gets like two feet or it's just full of weeds you know for us to go through the process to give proper notice and hit the days that were required by ordinance then it's really getting a long ways away from the point it turned into a problem so and that can be frustrating to some neighbors so just note that i can answer any other questions you have on the report Second. Second. Moved by Miller, second by Singleton. Singleton. We have a motion and a second. Be ready to your votes. Please display the votes. Voting in favor, Wilson, Beck, Campus, Coltman, Miller, Singleton, Strike, and Hendricks. All right, do we need feature requests for council agenda items or administrative action? Seeing none. Uh, we have an announcement of upcoming events. Jim, welcome. Uh, Jacob Jennings with the Seward County Chamber Development Partnership, uh, 616 Bradford Street. Uh, you should have received our organization's quarterly report uh, via email. Um, let us know if you have any questions on that. Uh, we'll be having lots of community festivals this upcoming summer throughout Seward County. Uh, you can stay up to date on that through our weekly electronic newsletter, the Blue River Buzz, um, about those upcoming events. Uh, in our strategic plan, we've identified that we need to better reach our commuter population. Uh, we've launched a podcast called the Talk Seward County Podcast. Um, you can find that on all the major podcasting platforms. And we had Craig Butcher recently up here uh, to talk about how tax increment financing works. So thanks to Craig for sharing on that. Uh, this summer, you and now will be hosting 25 Mandela Washington Fellows for our Leadership Institute. In civic, in civic engagement uh, during the six weeks of June 8th through July 16th. Uh, they will host 25 professional fellows from various countries in Africa. Um, these fellows will be coming to Seward on Thursday, June 23rd for a networking supper at 5.30 p.m. Uh, and then for the supper is at 6. 6 p.m., thank you. And then for a uh, mock 4th of July committee meeting afterwards. 
Um, so I ask if you're interested to uh, please consider attending and welcoming our guests to that. And then lastly, uh, Jonathan should have called each of you um, about this, but please mark your calendars for Monday, June, June 20th. Uh, in the afternoon, we'll have a groundbreaking for a new um, company coming to the rail campus. Uh, and details will be sent via calendar invitation. So heads up for that. And that's all I have. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Great. That's your strategy session. This is a strategy, strategy, strategy session with city attorney to provide negotiation guidance for a possible acquisition of land. I move that city council go into closed session with mayor, city administrator, city clerk, city attorney for the protection of the public interest and to discuss real estate interests and to provide the city attorney with negotiating guidance for a period not to exceed 30 minutes. Okay. Do you have motions or a second? Second. Second by Wilkin. You guys your votes. Please play the votes. Voting in favor of Wilkin, Beck, Camper, Coltsman, Miller, Singleton, Strike, and Hendrick. Motion passes. Uh, the mayor will restate. The council has voted to go into closed session for the protection of the public interest and to discuss real estate interest and, and to provide the city attorney with negotiating guidance. We are in closed session. Thank you. No action will be taken. I'm Ron.